Hello my lovelies, it's me again. How are you? My name is Sally and I am here to talk to you about true crime, conspiracy theories, all the good stuff. If you're new here, welcome. Pull up a chair, get involved, subscribe, like, comment, share my videos, do whatever comes naturally to you. And if you're returning after my other videos, welcome back. So today, today I'm again taking a different approach, a different kind of story. I'm changing things up. This story, or case, I don't think stories are the right word. So this week, we are going to talk about Monica Berger. Have you heard of her? Because until I was told about her, I hadn't. I hadn't heard of her. And this case is very, very controversial, let me tell you. So any opinion that I give, please don't get offended or get upset by it. This is the, it's basically just my opinion of it. Doesn't mean I'm right. Doesn't mean I'm wrong. It's just my opinion. Okay? Just saying. Just saying that so you people know. Monica Bergens. A little background on Monica. I couldn't find any. <laughs> I couldn't find anything about her childhood. I couldn't find anything about her school life, about her family. I couldn't find any single bit of information <laughs> on this woman from before this case happened. Other than she is a married mum of three who once lived in Texas and when she was arrested for this crime she lived in Cincinnati again in America and she is accused of faking the illnesses that her youngest son has and the reason that people say that she did this is because she's suffering with a mental health condition herself called Munch Munchausen by proxy syndrome or Munchausen syndrome by proxy. If you don't know what that is, it is a condition where people will cause illnesses or injuries to other people so they can gain things from that. But for a lot of people, they don't actually believe that she suffered with this. They just think she is just this monster mother who used her son to con people out of up to $40,000 worth of money. 40,000. As I said earlier, when their youngest son, son was born, and um, I'm going to call him JB because I don't want to say names if I don't need to, especially for victims. So we'll, for the purpose of this video, we'll just call him JB. When JB was born, he was born in Texas and he was born prematurely at 25 weeks. Now people that have had babies know that any child that is born early will suffer with medical issues or can suffer with medical issues, issues with their breathing and etc etc um, which he did and he was actually diagnosed of having something known as NF1 which is neurofibromatosis but it is, it is basically a condition that causes benign tumours to grow all over their bodies which obviously causes a lot of pain a lot of worry it's just it's just not a very nice thing to have and w when he was a baby he was diagnosed as having this condition he also had something called chari malfunction but that is where the base of the brain is connected too low to the spinal cord i believe which obviously again causes issues with mobility and pain and just sounded like this boy was just in a lot of pain constantly all the time bless his little heart until the age of three um jb was cared for by a team of medical staff at the dell's children hospital in austin texas during this time he developed a benign tumor or a growth on the inside of his mouth and his mother took him to the doctors and they decided based on her description of his symptoms that they would insert a feeding tube into his stomach so that's what they did so at the age of three he wasn't eating he was basically nil by mouth and he was being fed through a tube in his stomach also by the time jb turned three nurses and doctors at the hospital actually began to notice that 
his mother, Monica, would exaggerate symptoms. She would make symptoms sound worse than they actually were from what the nurses and what the doctors had witnessed. It didn't seem to be as severe as Monica was saying. They also discovered, and would later um, bring this up in court, that Monica and Monica's husband had taken JD to different medical staff. And the reason they believed that they did this is because, I'll give you an example, Monica would show up at hospital with JB and he would have an issue with his breathing. So the doctors would check him over and they would say, no, he, he's fine. Um, maybe you're being a little bit paranoid. And Monica would be like, nope, I'm getting me a second opinion because I know more than you because I'm a doctor. The medical team at the Dells Children's Hospital in Austin, Texas decided enough was enough. We think that this boy is in danger. So they reported the case to Dr. George Edwards and he was a specialist in medical child abuse and paediatrics. So he was a paediatric doctor and he was also a specialist in abuse through medical care for children. And this is the time that they found out that they discovered, shockingly, that yes, what the nurses were saying was substantial. They also thought that she was lying about symptoms and how poorly JB was. And they also discovered that even though they had thought for three years that Monica was a doctor, she wasn't a doctor. She'd not even attended medical school and there's actually no record that she'd been to any college in the country. So she didn't have a degree in anything that they could find. But during JB's care, since he was born, she's inserted herself into the treatment of her son and she's been able to give him IVs and do things that parents don't necessarily do because they're not qualified to do that. She made everybody, including her husband, believe that she was a qualified doctor. And it turns out she's not even a real doctor. She just pretended. After Dr. Edwards had made these discoveries, he told the hospital, the Dell's Children's Hospital in Texas, to make contact with Monica and explain to her that they knew everything. They knew everything. Dr. Edwards also suggested that if they couldn't sort this out, then he recommended that the hospital contacted uh, CPS, so the Child Protective Services, because he was concerned about this boy's health. Rightly so, though. The hospital did contact Monica. They wrote her a letter detailing everything that they had uh, found out, everything they had discovered. Monica set up a meeting to go and meet them, but obviously she was never going to attend this meeting. What she did instead is she cancelled the meeting last minute, she upped and she moved. She travelled from Austin, Texas to Cincinnati. She left her husband and her other two sons behind and took JB for extra care is what she said in court and her husband even said this. We changed hospitals because we felt that the Texas Dells Children's Hospital was just letting us down, they weren't good enough so we went to a hospital that was better. So obviously, because um, Monica didn't attend this meeting, the Dell Children's Hospital did contact CPS. CPS investigated, but closed the case pretty quickly because there was no substantial evidence that she'd done anything wrong. That's just one example of where the system let this boy down, because this story is about to get worse. So in 2015, when JB was three years old, as I mentioned previously, they moved to Cincinnati and JB started getting care at Cincinnati Children Medical Centre, also known as CCMC. That was his next place of care. During the time, JB was actually under the care of three expert doctors and a whole medical team, nurses, everybody. He had quite a big team in Cincinnati. At this hospital, they, based on Monica's description of symptoms, they put JB on really strong painkillers because he was always in pain and they inserted, they inserted a longer feeding tube and it, it, 
when you think about it, when a child is completely, well he's not completely healthy, he does have these conditions, when a child is healthy-ish and the symptoms are being exaggerated by somebody and he's being put through something that he doesn't need to be put through, it does make you wonder, like, what was that kid feeling? What was he going through? He's only three. He doesn't understand, but it's not nice. Some time passed and um, again at this hospi hospital, the nurses and the doctors began to notice that once again, Monica would exaggerate his symptoms. They, she would talk about things that weren't even there, symptoms he didn't even have. Um, she began shaving his head and his eyebrows and in a later interview that you can actually watch on YouTube she does an interview and although the interview is quite uncomfortable to watch I will say this because the the, the person that's interviewing her just it has his opinion on her and you can tell from the start that it has an opinion on her and if she is mentally ill it does make for an uncomfortable watch just just a warning there in this interview she says that she in fact wasn't the person that shaved her head and the eyebrows but then in the next breath she says she is the one that did it so you have to take from that what you will and believe what you want to believe is what i'm saying so once again jb's doctors decided to contact the the mayerson center which is a center for the safe and healthy children in cincinnati and this is where cases on medical neglect and things are investigated they also found that the discrepancies in the stories in what the doctors and nurses were witnessing just couldn't be ignored. There is no way that they could, could ignore this. They had to take it to the next level. But at this time, it's important for me to point out that at this time, Cincinnati Hospital and the hospital in Texas hadn't hadn't communicated and they hadn't joined the dots. So they so in Cincinnati they didn't know that she'd already that Monica had already been investigated for medical child abuse. By May of 2016, the Ham Hamilton County Department for Jobs and Family Services were informed of, of the case and they took it from there. After hearing everything that they'd heard, they decided to do a therapeutic separation of Monica and JB. Now what this does it is a legal requirement where Monica can't have contact with her son for a period of time. So in this case they decided to admit JB into hospital, Monica wasn't allowed to visit, she wasn't allowed to make contact and they would watch him for a period of time and base his treatment on what they saw. So they basically started from scratch from like as if he had just arrived in Cincinnati. They, they took his feeding tube out, they stopped his pain medication, they stopped everything just to see how things would go and to see if Monica is in fact exaggerating the symptoms. In all fairness to this, the results that they found were quite shocking because it turns out that JB didn't need a feeding tube, he could eat perfectly well, he didn't need to be on oxygen which he was previously on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, he, hon he only needed that at night when he needed to sleep and he also didn't need any, any pain medication. They didn't give him a single drop and he was a perfectly normal little boy. He played, he interacted, he was happy. So this obviously then furthers their concern as to what Monica has been doing. And from that moment, they obviously involved the police. There is more to the story than meets the eye though, people. I'm just saying. There is a whole social media puzzle that needs to be put together shocking social media in there again so once monica and jb had moved to cincinnati they obviously struggled with finances etc so they made contact with somebody called mg gutman and he was a volunteer for the jewish family services and what they did is they found monica accommodation gave her money helped her with groceries good samaritans they they helped her settle in and because obviously she was struggling she had a child in hospital. Monica also joined a Facebook book group called Physicians Mums Group. So this was a mums group dedicated to doctors and medical staff who obviously had difficulties balancing life and work and their children and you know they all had children 
they had children that some of them had children that were disabled and just a support group, a lovely little support group. It's really nice, isn't it? And that was run by somebody called Dr. Sabri. And Dr. Sabri was obviously a doctor. And she made a contact with Monica after Monica posted in the group that she was having difficulties with her insurance. So she was finding it hard to pay for JB's medical care. Basically saying that the insurance were being being awkward for the insurance. Which I would like to point out wasn't true. So after a few phone calls and messages and emails, Dr. Sabri was pretty convinced because Monica had told her that JB had a terminal illness and he was going to die. And that terminal illness was cancer. So Monica was going around telling people, she also told this to MG, MJ Gutman as well, that her son had cancer and he was going to die. Now that pulls on heartstrings of anybody, whether you're a mum or not. But if I read a story like that on my Facebook, I'd want to help. So Dr. Sabri being the wonderful person that they are, they decided to set up a GoFundMe page to help get medical costs covered for JB. Now this GoFundMe page went off, let me tell you, it went off. It was said that um, Monica was sending the link to everybody she knew, she had it on her Facebook and Dr. Sabri also had it on her personal account and on the, and on the mum support page and Later in court, MJ Gutman said that Monica sent them the link for the GoFundMe page and expressed how her son was had only had so many weeks to live and could they share this because she needed medical care to try and save her son. Looking at the pictures of the GoFundMe page as well, Monica put pictures on of JB with his hair cut and his eyebrows shaved off. So he did actually look like a child who has cancer. You wouldn't look at that child and think that the mum is lying. That's not that's not how people's brains work. So everybody assumed based on what Monica had said. In fact, no, they didn't assume. They thought they knew because Monica had said these words that he was dying of cancer. To lie about something like that is just it's disgusting. There's no other way of putting it. That is disgusting. And I understand what people are going to say about maybe her being mentally ill, but that still doesn't stop the feelings of disgust and hatred for her saying something like that. That is something that is not forgivable, in my opinion. But I'll let you. I'll let you decide what you think of that. So the police obviously took over the case and Monica was indicted on May the 4th, 2016. And during the interviews, she basically came clean to everything. She initially tried to lie. She tried to play the victim or whatever you want to say. But the police were developing more and more evidence against her. And she couldn't really deny it, to be honest. I don't think that's something that she would be able to deny. So they ended up charging her with felonious assault, endangering children and telecommunication fraud. Because she had... As I said at the beginning of the video, managed to scam people out of up to, or maybe even more, than $40,000. In 2017, Monica Burgett was taken to court for these crimes, and after a trial that lasted a few weeks, she was found guilty of these crimes. But this is the bit now. Now, her defence was obviously, she was mentally ill and she did plead guilty by reason of insanity and she she might be mentally ill there's conflicting stories on this again online some say she was some say she wasn't so again i couldn't find any doctor or scientific reports to tell me that she definitely had this munchausen syndrome by proxy there, were, there was nothing definite, but if she did, then you, you kind of feel sorry for her because she doesn't know she's doing anything wrong. But if she didn't, then that woman is loco. So she was found guilty and she was ordered to pay back $26,800 to the GoFundMe page because that's all that they could prove, prove 
that she'd spent. Um, so she had to pay all that back to the GoFundMe page and everybody that donated, provided they had their details on there, will get their money back. So that, that's positive, that's good. But she wasn't sent to prison or she wasn't sent to a mental hospital to get help for her mental health condition. This woman got five years probation. Just a system. They just fail people left, right, and centre. They kill innocent people. They don't lock up people that are clearly guilty of stuff. They don't teach people lessons. They let, let them off with a slap on the bloody wrist. I don't understand. I think the biggest punishment for Monica is probably the fact that she is now not allowed contact with her children. She is obviously fighting to try and get contact with her children, but as of yet, as of today, the 21st of August 2020, she still hasn't had any contact with her children. She's not allowed. The court won't let her. And she's also not allowed to leave Cincinnati for five for the five-year probation anyway. So I don't really know what she's up to right now. I don't really know where she is. I don't really care. But I would love to hear your opinion. Love to. I think I'm torn. I don't think I have a hundred percent of an opinion on this. Because I'm one of these people that have to see scientific, logical facts in front of my face to know what's happening. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not somebody who makes quick judgments on people because of something that I've heard. I don't do that. So I'm, I, admittedly, I'm, I sit on the fence with this one. My thoughts just go out to her little, little boy. Who, by the way, is doing very well. He's on no medication. He's got no feeding tube. He's not on any oxygen. He started kindergarten. I just don't know where I stand. I have opinions on certain things, as I've said, but I don't really 100% know where I stand on this. So please let me know what you think. What are your opinions on this? What do you think should have been done? What do you think she's like? I'd love to know. That's the story of Monica Burgett. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you everybody who has subscribed and liked and shared and commented on my videos. I really do appreciate it. Please, please keep doing it. Please keep subscribing. Please keep liking. Please keep sharing, especially on the old Facebook. Share my video for me. It would mean the world. You guys are awesome. So yeah, that's it. I will leave you to enjoy the rest of your day or your evening or whatever. Stay safe out there and remember, don't kill anybody guys. Love you. Bye.